All right. This picture here sort of gives us a glimpse of what I want to talk to you about today. I don't know how a, a little flower like that, and I don't know what kind of flower it is. Is it a wildflower, Sally? Maybe, probably. All right. How a wildflower could grow up through a crack in the cement or paving or whatever that is in our picture. But God created that wildflower to be able to persevere and grow up through there somehow. And God creates things to persevere. And that's what I want to talk to you today about is perseverance. Just like this wildflower, God desires for all of us to have perseverance. A definition of perseverance, a simple definition of perseverance is to continue in the face of great difficulty. To continue in the face of great difficulty. You know, every one of us from time to time face some kind of great difficulty. Some of us today are facing a time of great difficulty. And many times a great difficulty that we face can lead to discouragement. And discouragement is something we are able to persevere through, and that's what I want to talk about today. But first of all, discouragement, one way to explain discouragement <coughs> Is, is the idea of, of losing your courage or no longer persevering. Discouragement will try to cause us to no longer persevere, like the, the flower in the sidewalk coming up. It continued to persevere in the face of a great difficulty of where the seed was, but it persevered and it came through. So discouragement, when you stop persevering, we've all experienced discouragement in one way or another. With the uh, virus deal still going on, can be discouraging at times. And discouragement, it's similar to a virus in that it's universal. Everyone can have discouragement. It's, it's repeating discouragement. It's, it's not a one-time thing. It can repeat itself. It's contagious. Sometimes our discouragement leads us or leads others to be discouraged also. And discouragement is even deadly because the enemy wants to use discouragement to try to kill God's promises over our lives. However, like the little flower in the sidewalk, we can persevere in the midst of discouragement. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to go about overcoming discouragement with hope. You know, hope is an important key that helps us overcome discouragement. You know, it's hope that, that anchors our soul. It's hope that uh, it's one of the things that sustains our lives. It's, it's hope that gives us stability in our lives. And I want to begin with a scripture out of the book of Romans that 
I believe will help us to begin to understand how we can overcome discouragement with hope. Romans 15 verse 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance or perseverance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. We receive greater levels of hope through the reading of scripture. And we're going to be looking at a lot of scripture today. Through the endurance or perseverance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. The scriptures can bring us encouragement and hope. Discouragement can be overcome through what is taught in the scriptures. And so what I want to do today is show you five ways, if you will, that are taught in the scriptures that will help us to replace discouragement with encouragement and provide us with hope as we persevere in the face of great difficulties. And by the way, what I'm going to be sharing with you today is, is what I found in a, in a Bible study by a pastor by the name of David Stein. But he came up with five ways to replace discouragement with hope. And the first way that we can go about replacing discouragement with hope is tell God how you feel. Tell God how you feel. You know, in the Old Testament, David, he faced great challenges and great difficulties, which caused him at times to be discouraged. And in the Psalms, David would tell God how he felt during times of discouragement. We see in Psalms 143 and verse 4, he says, I am losing all hope. I am paralyzed with fear. That same verse in the uh, Good News translation, it says, So I am ready to give up. I am in deep despair. You know, God, he's not intimidated by our discouragement. He's not intimidated by how we feel and when we tell him how we feel. That's what David did. The scriptures say also in Lamentations 2.19, it says, Pour out your feelings to the Lord as you would pour water out of a jug. It can be powerful and cleansing for us to be real with our feelings and to fully express them to God. He wants the real you. He knows you inside and out. And he's not afraid of what you're bringing. He's not afraid when you tell him how you really feel when you're discouraged or you're going through a time of great difficulty. Because it says in Psalm 34 and verse 18 out of the Message Bible. It says, if your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. So we must remind ourselves that he is with us in the good times and the bad times. He's the one to pick us up when we fall down. And we receive hope when we remind ourselves that he is with us. And also telling God how we feel, it can activate our prayer life. Nehemiah, as the, the leader in the rebuilding of the wall of at Jerusalem, he faced many challenges. He faced many times of great difficulties and discouragement. 
And sometimes the discouragement he faced caused him to sit down and weep. And you know, weeping before God is another way of, of telling him and letting him know how you feel. Sometimes you don't even have to say it in words. He can see how you feel. He, can, he knows. But as you weep, as you just pour out how you feel before him. And Nehemiah, this led Nehemiah to pray before God. We see in Nehemiah 1 verse 4, it says, When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. And for some days, I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. So as you tell God how you feel in the midst of discouragement, you'll find that it does activate your prayer life. And that's a good thing. Man, if we didn't ever get discouraged and nothing ever happened, we probably wouldn't pray as much. But praying to God and telling him how we feel gives us hope when we are discouraged. So, the first way to replace your discouragement with hope is tell God how you feel. And then number two, see God for who he really is. When you're discouraged, sometimes you just simply need to change your perspective and remind yourself just how big God is compared to the challenge you're facing. Remind yourself how he has come through for you in the past. And he plans to come through for you again, despite any opposition that may be coming against you. So allow yourself to fully experience who God is to you. When we see God for who he really is, our perspective begins to shift. And, and we need to remember how limited our perspective is. So as we remember what God has done for us in the past, our perspective changes and we will remember just how big God is compared to the challenges we face. Psalm 143 and verse 5 in the Good News Translation again. It says, I remember the days gone by. I think about all that you have done. I bring to mind all your deeds. We must keep in mind that what God has done for us in the past, how he has restored us and brought us breakthrough in the past. And God plans on showing up in your life again and again. Going back to the story of Nehemiah. Nehemiah faced a lot of opposition, challenges in rebuilding the wall. And is mainly from people such as Sanballat and Tobiah and, and Geshem. And as we read in Nehemiah chapter 2, it says, But when Sanballat the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, and Geshem, the Arab, heard it. They mocked us and despised us and said, What is this thing you're doing? Are you rebelling against the king? So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven will give us success. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. Nehemiah was able to stand up to the opposition and tell them that God would give them success. And how did he know? How did he know that God would give them success? Because he had given them success in the past. He brought them back to Jerusalem after being in exile. God had given them success 
in the past. God plans on showing up again in your life and giving you success again and again. So remind yourself just how big God is. See God for who he really is. That's number two. So the first two steps to replace discouragement with hope. Tell God how you feel. See God for who he really is. And then the third way to replace discouragement with hope. This one gets a bell. The third way to replace discouragement with hope. Ask God for the next step. Ask God for the next step. You know, we need to recognize that God has a purpose for our lives and he will get us to the other side of our difficulty. He'll get us to the other side of our discouragement because victory is his plan for us. And so if you don't know exactly what the plan is while you're being discouraged, ask him. Ask him what the plan is. If you're discouraged and don't know what to do, ask God for the next step. Psalm 143 and verse 8. My prayers go up to you. Show me the way I should go. I mean, this is good stuff. You know, I'm not making this up. This, this is what the Bible tells us to do, you know, so we should do it. Show me, Lord, the way I should go. I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know how to get out of this discouragement or where I'm at or how to get through this great difficulty. So I'm praying to you, Lord, show me the way I should go. Psalm 142 and verse 3, when I'm ready to give up, he knows what I should do. So ask God for the next step when you don't know what to do. Because when we face our challenges and we ask God for the next step and we believe that he will give us success, then our hope is activated. And hope is not just an internal thing to make us, you know, feel better, which I'm glad it does, but it's, it's an action. It, it must not only be experienced internally, but hope should drive us to some kind of action. Jesus says in John 10, 27, he says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. You can take action by listening to the voice of God, to Jesus and then following what he says. And that takes some kind of action. When you can hear from God, take action and follow what he says. God has a next step for you. Even if you can't see it right now. Jesus says in Matthew 7, says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So we simply need to ask, and then we need to listen, and then we need to follow what we hear. So if there's a, a circumstance in your life right now in which you're, you're unsure of what the next step is, ask him what the next step is.
God has a next step for you, even if you can't see it right now. He may or may not have an answer for you right away, but you know you keep on asking, you keep on seeking, you keep on knocking, as the scripture tells us to. And he may even tell you to just keep doing what you're doing. It may not be anything any different than what you've been doing. He may just want you to keep doing what you're doing. But ask and expect God to come forth with the next step. So ask God for the next step. So the first three ways to replace discouragement with hope. Tell God how you feel. See God for who he really is. Ask God for the next step. And then number four <coughs> of how we can replace discouragement with hope is trust God for his strength. Trust God for his strength. Lean on God's strength in your place of weakness. Lean on God's strength and not your own. Declare that he is your strength. That's what David did. David made this declaration in Psalm 28, 7, said, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. God is good, and he is trustworthy. He is our strength. We don't succeed through our own efforts, our own strength, our own energy, but through his alone. When we declare that, the Lord is my strength. We don't have to rely on ours. The Apostle Paul, in his second letter to the Corinthians, he let the Christians there know about the trouble he and his team went through in Asia. He wrote in 2 Corinthians 1.8, he said, We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. That would be discouraging to think that, to think that we'd never live through it. We'll never get through this. That's, that's discouraging. But then, in the next verse, and I'll read this out of the Message Bible again, he says, we felt like we'd been sent to death row, that it was all over for us. As it turned out, it was the best thing that could have happened. Instead of trusting in our own strength or wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. Not a bad idea since he's the God who raises the dead. Man, if he can raise the dead, he can raise us up out of discouragement. He can, he can show us the way out. It's not a bad idea to trust God for his strength and not our own. And when you trust him for strength, he can use you to bring hope and strength to those around you. You know, maybe you're not in a season of discouragement right now, but you know someone who is and perhaps a close friend or a family member. So, so what can you do to help encourage them? How can you bring them hope, even if it's in a small way? Looking at in the Nehemiah again, we see him using the strength that God had given him to encourage and give hope to the rest of the people involved in the rebuilding of the wall in Nehemiah 4. It says, after I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, and fight for your families, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your homes. See, you can encourage others with reminders that you don't have to be afraid. The Lord is great and awesome. So lean on his strength in whatever difficulty you're facing. It gives us hope. It gives others around us hope when we realize that we can lean on his strength and not our own. So trusting for his strength. So 
The first four ways to replace discouragement with hope. Tell God how you feel. See God for who he really is. Ask God for the next step. Trust God for his strength. And then the last one, number five. How to replace discouragement with hope. Refuse to give up. Refuse to give up. See, the enemy wants us to feel that there's no hope and he wants us to give up in the face of great difficulties. But God desires the opposite. God wants us to persevere in the midst of great difficulties and challenges and not give up. Going back to Nehemiah and the building of the wall in Nehemiah 6, 15, 16, it says, so the wall was completed in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Nehemiah and the people building the wall, they refused to give up and they built the wall in 52 days. Man. How would you like a, to get a new home built nowadays in 52 days? More like 52 weeks, 52 months, maybe. But anyway, Nehemiah, they refused to give up. And, that, and by refusing to give up and accomplishing what they set out to do, their enemies realized that the work of rebuilding the wall had been done with the help of the Lord. And when we refuse to give up, the enemy begins to realize that God is on our side and is way bigger than he is. Hope arises when we refuse to give up. And the enemy is terrified when we have hope. When hope arises and we refuse to give up, discouragement is displaced and destroyed in our lives. We're going to read some more scriptures because this is what, this is what it says. It would, it's, it, it's what we're supposed to do. Refuse to give up. 2 Corinthians 4.8. This is out of the Living Bible. It says, We are pressed on every side by troubles but not crushed and broken. We are perplexed because we don't know why things happen as they do, but we don't give up and quit. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. In Psalm 31, 24, out of the Message Bible, be brave, be strong, don't give up. Expect God to get here soon. Refuse to give up. So, so if you're experiencing any level of discouragement today or, or you're in a season that, that you're in that's discouraging because of finances or health or relationships or, or whatever. You know, just think about putting into practice these five things that uh, we talked about this morning. Tell God how you feel. Be honest with him and begin to pour out your heart to him. See God for who he really is. Take some time to reflect on who God is to you and how he has come through for you in the past. Remind yourself continually or just of just how big he is compared to the challenge you're facing. And ask God for the next step. Lean on God's strength. When you are where you're weak, he'll make you strong. Trust that he's got your back and that he has plans for you, even if things seem impossible at the moment. Because remember, God is the God of the impossible. And then, that's what we just said, 
the last one, refuse to give up. Refuse to give up as hard as it may seem right now. Keep going. The Lord is in this with you and he will never forsake you. He knows exactly what you're going through and he will see you through to the other side. Don't give up. Don't give up. Now, in, in closing this, this morning, I just want to remind ourselves that this, none of these things will work without a relationship with Jesus Christ. A right relationship with Christ. The, an ongoing relationship with Christ. These things will work. And if you don't have that this morning, God knows your heart where you're at. You know, I, gr I grew up in the church and I thought I was saved. I remember when I was 12 years old and uh, getting baptized in water at the Baptist church. But then as I approached 20 years old, I had a couple of guys come up to me one time at an event at our homecoming football game there where I lived. And they began to talk to me about Jesus. And they began to ask me if I had a relationship with Jesus. And you know, it made me very uncomfortable that they were asking me that, even though I thought I did. And then I realized later that I didn't. So when I was 20 years old, I started my relationship with Christ. So I don't know where all of y'all are at today, really. I know some of you better than others, but I don't know you like God knows you. But an ongoing relationship with Christ, it begins with repentance, forgiveness of sins, and confessing that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. And this is what the scriptures say. And I'll let them speak for themselves. Isaiah 59 two says, It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death. Not only, well, this is eternal death. But, and this is one of these but God things. But God is not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. So then in Acts 3.19 says, Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. This is what the scriptures say. This is what we can learn from. This is what they teach us to do. And then, in Romans 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved You'll be saved from eternal death and saved to eternal life. So you can have a right relationship with God just going through the scriptures and there's plenty of other scriptures that, that explain you know, about salvation and about having a relationship with Christ. But these are the ones that we're looking at today. So you can have a right relationship with Christ today. You can pray silently as we're going to pray in just a moment. In fact, let's just go ahead and stand. Bow your heads. You can pray silently. If you haven't ever started a right relationship with Christ, 
you can do that today. You can pray something like this as, as we pray together here. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess my sin. I ask you to save me now. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want to have a relationship with you so that I can tell you how I feel, so that I can see you for who you are, so that I can ask you for the next step when I don't know what the next step is, so that I can lean on your strength and not my own. So I don't have to give up when I'm faced with what seems to be an impossible situation. God, I pray that now. In your holy name, I pray it. Amen. And if you prayed that type of prayer for the first time and you're you just now starting a relationship with Christ. I, I want to talk to you after we close. I'll be up here. If you have any other questions about how to have a relationship with Christ, I want to talk to you. So, perseverance to continue in the face of great difficulty I guess the main thing about perseverance if you have that relationship with Christ you know, and you're facing those great difficulties or discouragement you know just never give up never give up let's pray one more